All right, and we are live. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting and compelling episode of Suck Talk, filmed once again as an annual tradition at the undisclosed location of the Kellamar compound. We're here with Mr. DKE Toys himself, and we are going to review a bunch of bootlegs. We also have my esteemed colleague, Mr. Dollar Slice Bootlegs. He's been my compatriot for this week. We've been in sunny Southern California doing the convention known as Designer Con, and we're going to look at some toys that we were selling at the event and give you our informed and esteemed opinions on these things. This is a remarkable first for the program known as Suck Hour Suck Talk because we have our first live studio audience. So make some noise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, listen. We all have to sa we all have to sacrifice for the sake of art, and um, just because we're pressed for time and we have a lot of material to go through, we're not going to explain any of the background. If you don't know what this shit is about, this is probably not the video for you to start on. You can go look in the back catalog. There's a lot of 101 videos, if you will, that explain what the fuck it is we do. This is for people in the know, so we're just going to launch right into it. Now, we got some we got some heavies in, in, the, in the front row, and we're going to get into that later yeah. if they should happen to give uh, want to give any valuable opinions. Okay, now look, I got to keep this shit under control. So let's get started. Give me a fucking bootleg, and I'll tell you what I think of it. Okay. This is by Rekha. Here we go. JJ Jabber Hut. It's an edition of 30. You've seen this, right? Yeah, I was walking by. Right? Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we've seen we've seen this artist before, and we know what he does. And this is continuing his tradition of these sort of spoofy Star Wars figures. And again, the execution is excellent. It's a heavy, almost wood-like board. It's some sort of particle board or some uh, light MDF with a custom vacuum-formed blister over it and silk screen card silk screen card die cut and a, a very chunky heavy piece of solid not rotocasted right okay. uh, resin awesomely painted and just generally a well executed piece what do you think about it dollar slice uh -oh. i get to hold it yeah you get to also say this what is you think fucking about heavy it. <laughs> now admittedly when we talked about this i mean this is a pun he knew it and he said he just you couldn't hold it here. No, I held one. Thank you very much. Um, it, it, he said he just couldn't resist. What's what was so irresistible about this particular idea? Java jabber. I don't know. He just thought it was a hoot and decided <laughs> to go for it. Yes. Okay. Now, fortunately for the people whose work we're going to be reviewing tonight, have been sufficiently tacoed and wined. So you know my my sort of acidic. You know, cutting edge opinions have been a bit softened well, that, that, by the hospitality. Oh, yeah, see. so it's like you know, and whatever you know, we I, we we did a show like this, and it caused quite a controversy. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, I, so you've been buttered up. <laughs> well, no, but I'm just saying, it's like you know, you I, you I I have some you know all right. pretty. All right, we'll move on. Let's go. What's first, your... first of all, this is my fucking show, and we move on when oh. I want to move on. I know it's your house, <laughs> but I'm, there's some preambles that are required here. Uh, it's fine, you know. You know, I mean, I think the only criticism I would have of it, if it's it's playing in the very safe realm of a Star Wars gag, you know, and just sort of take a Star Wars character and just sort of verbatim put him into another situation and people like it and they get it, you know. And it's it's not avant-garde really in any way, but the execution is fantastic. Ooh, my fucking mind. Yeah, dude. and it's amazing that this guy can pull this shit off. That's like that's how much did he sell for? Ninety. And that's not ninety dollars worth of fucking resin right there? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> not, yeah. um, it's fucking cheaper in the UK. The resin that he gets in the UK is like a quarter or ten percent of the price in the US and he said that the company from he buys in big, you know, industrial size yeah. bins. And he said that um, that company, for some reason, cannot get their resin into the states, and I don't know why. Maybe it's full of lead. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it's really good. It's really good. It works with the rest of his shit. Good for him. I hope he sold a lot of them. And they did really well. Great, great. Everybody clap for that. <laughs> Listen, just like some of you guys, there's some of the people in the audience who are going to be looking at your shit, and you guys, if you really are busting, you are, everybody in the audience is part of this industry, a lot of people make this, if you are absolutely busting to say something about any of this shit, just raise your hand and 
we'll give you the floor. You agree with what we said about the last piece? Nothing to add? Okay, no. okay good. Oh, shit. Sure. <coughs> okay, what, who's, whose piece is this? This is Mark Todd. Mark Todd. Mm -hmm. So he actually hand sculpted this piece. Um, I had them cast in resin, and then he hand painted each one. Um, the card design was uh, done in pencil and then run through a risograph. What the fuck is that? A risograph is <laughs> something that a lot of people use for a zine that gets this texture. And it's kind of like a silk screen in a way because you run it through each color individually. And then those prints were sent to the guy who did the cards and glued to the silk screen. I mean, it really looks like a little kid did this. I think yeah. that's the aesthetic. <laughs> what do you think, Dollar Slice? It's got googly eyes and shit, man. It's fucking crazy. Fucking koalas and shit. Wugga! <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, fucking sick. <laughs> fucking fleet. This guy's done a couple of these things already. <laughs> it's in his style. Yes. Yeah, and he, this is like how many? How many of these has, has he done? Uh, there was. He did a Chewbacca version. There was three versions, and this was the Darth Vader. This is the third version. He repurposed the paper clip. The red paper clip. Sick. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Uh, again, if the only thing I was gonna say critical about it is, you know. And I'm not, not saying I'm not guilty of this too, but it is just plain in the I like Star Wars world. You know, and that's... That's what it's catering to. Yeah, it's catering to people who like Star Wars. And that's fine. I don't understand that as a criticism. Yeah. It's not say, I'm just saying it's a safe choice. Uh, if you're going to make a bootleg toy. This one's very interesting. Um, this is the Amazing Heroes line from Fresh Monkey Fiction. And uh, this guy, uh, Bill Murphy, ran a Kickstarter. And he... Made, took all of these public domain superheroes from the past and made figures out of them in kind of the toy biz, you know, uh, late 80s, 90s toy biz. No, no, that's no, not toy that's biz. That's Secret that's Wars. Secret Wars. See? I, I know it's not, but I'm saying it's like that look. That's a Secret that's Wars. That's Secret Fine, Wars. I stand corrected. That's a fucking Secret straight up yeah, Secret yeah, Wars. It's yeah. like a 5.5 five line. <laughs> this guy knows. This guy knows. <laughs> well, that's that's why I did those Secret figures Wars is because body. they look like Secret so Wars. So this was actually... Wait. You have something to say about that? Yeah, I, that, I'm sorry. That's why I dig those figures is because they are Secret Wars-like figures, and so they go right with my Secret Wars figures, and they're figures that we never got in the 80s, and now we're getting all these other really cool figures in that same scale, that same body type, and they fit right into your existing collection of toys. Is that is this a resin figure or is it a repurposed? No, this it's, is actually made in China. Okay. Yeah. Injection molded. Yep. Yeah. So I hooked him up with Alex Pardee to <clears throat> design these. He signed and numbered them and made an addition. Of but who is this character? Ron Reaper of Nightmares. Who the fuck is that? Alex Pardee just. Oh, that's his it. own character. Yeah. But the cool thing was that he has this figure already tooled. And so now he's looking for other ways to monetize it and finding other artists to do their So just do a, 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 a pad print on the same existing figure? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of a boring figure. <laughs> IMHL. <laughs> Any Let thoughts? Any thoughts? Do you give a shit? Yeah, yeah, I was psyched. I thought it was resin. And then I was like, fuck yeah. And then it's like injection all over. If you don't, so it's like, not resin. Fucking, and he's like, oh, no, no, it's still cool. No, no, it's still cool. It just wasn't like quite. I was like, oh, holy sheep shit. Look how fucking flawless that is. It's fucking rad. I really like it too. I think it's fun. I, I'm psyched to see some I need of to these. find something negative to say about it, so hand it over. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> when you're done, do you want I don't know, I like it, dude. You can take it out of package and it's like it? Because it fucking moves around, it's an original piece, it's not Star Wars, that's pretty cool. Okay, finally. So, <laughs> like, you know, like, it's, I, it's pretty swell if you ask me. I like the weird What's hate. Star and, Wars hate? I'm not hate, I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate, obviously I don't hate Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's plain. This is cool because at least it's an original character. You know, it's taking a risk in that department. Mm -hmm. You have to. Do you have to know who this character is to like this thing? No, oh, you're just an Alex Party fan. What if I don't know who Alex Party is? Well, is then this you judge it based on its aesthetics and go from there? Right? Okay, so then I don't like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> audience was raised. Audience. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody has something to yell it out. I, again, I would say I would buy that figure just because it is in the Secret Wars style. Let's see, that's what even I'm even if I don't know who that figure is, I would want to add it to my collection. But the thing is, I think that appeal. I think ultimately that's a weakness of all of these creations. Is that if you have to like like the thing it's ripping, if it's borrowing from. Only if that's the only criteria for liking it, it's not the strongest piece. I think some element of 
what the artist is adding to that platform has to be the true appeal or else it's just sort of like a nostalgia piece. And in that, that's why I think in a way it's an yeah, artistic, it kind of it's sucks. not an artistic success if the only reason you like it is because it reminds you of something else. It's got to speak alone for itself yeah. and shit. I mean, it can stand on the platform of something familiar, but if it doesn't expand that platform in any way, I don't know. I don't know. You're arguing like people's taste. That's weird. well. This is an opinion show. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? Supposed? I'm not. I'm not a neutral. You. You. You are. Per, you are true neutral in all this. I'm not neutral. I just recognize that there are different artists who create different things, and I don't have to like it all. But there's an audience. I for know, it. but if you're going to analyze this stuff, mm -hmm. you should just at least, even if you, it's not truly your own opinion, give some argument to different. Aspects of, of understanding and appreciating it. I think that's just, just it's cool. I like it. Move on. Somebody has to say something critical. They do, or else it's not interesting. Oh, so we're just trying to make an interesting show. <laughs> As opposed okay. to what an so uninteresting we're... show. <laughs> So we're just gonna shit on everything. And I make wasn't it, shitting make it on it. I thought show. that was I was that was I shitting on it or was that <laughs> honest? <laughs> I, I, I think you're kinda shitting on it. It's honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, know, I know I'm just a cartoon character to you. And you, and you, will, you will never admit to understanding the nuances. <laughs> you better be careful. You're just gonna become a parody of yourself. <laughs> Here's the next one by Nick C. Kirk. This is his second figure in his uh, VIP Citizen Trump line. Okay, and what's it about? I don't think he likes Donald Trump very much. What? Hold it back in the light. It's a well, dark. we're going to throw photos of these things on here, so it's, there's and no he way we're going to... Diamonds, he's had 24 karat gold and diamonds done with the shield. I don't get it. <laughs> Trump is gold, you know. I don't get it. <laughs> what do you mean you don't get it? It's a building and it transforms into a robot. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's well executed. It's um I don't like Trump. You don't like Trump. Let's be friends. Peace, right? I mean, you, now you've, made, you've put me up tight, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, to be honest with you now. Awesome. I can put your up <laughs> Well, I mean, what do you, does anyone in the audience want to say anything about this piece? It glitters. I like the glitter. George? It's, it's boring. It's boring? Yeah. What's boring I, about it? Uh, you think making a Trump piece is just a, is it easy? Yeah. It's easy? It's like Star Wars. Yeah. Ooh. So Star Wars is boring now? Right. No, Star Wars is easy. Trump is easy. Right. Speaking from a guy who's, who's made a Trump piece, I, I don't get that. What? Yeah, I made a Trump I don't get two Trump get pieces. Speaking from a guy who's made several Trump pieces. Yeah, you did Darth Trump. I did Darth yeah, Trump. I don't get that. I mean, I... I look at it and I don't get it. Why? Because it's not subtle. Well, it's too subtle. Read the why would he wear, have a shield? Why would he? he okay. Why is he wearing a shield? Why is he wearing a shield? Why is he wearing a shield? I get the gold. I mean, that's. Okay, I get it. Yeah, but he's got bone spurs. He couldn't okay, do that. Okay, but shit. no, but it's. it's <laughs> okay, I, I, well, then before we read the back. I mean, do I, I have to really read the back in order to get it? Is that the thing? My interpretation of this piece is it's sort of like a chintzy gold, um, sort of glitzed over version of a police state. Which is what something we've all, you know, those of us who are not on the Trump team, feared when he got elected that we were sliding into some sort of realm of fascism. And this is like a Trump brand of fascism that's covered in guard and gold. And in that, you know, he himself would never go down there and right. break skulls. But I mean, he symbolized, this, this is sort of like a metaphorical, you know, distillation of like what Trump supposedly would stand for in the eyes of a, of a, of a, of a crime liberal snowflake. So and that's, and that's that, you know, right? Sounds I, like you like it a little bit. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean I'm just, I'm, I'm, <laughs> just like I'm trying to extend my, I'm just trying to understand what the person is going for. Hmm. And it works in that regard. I mean, imagine if the stormtroopers were all gold, because if, if Donald Trump was actually a successful fascist, what would his army look like? And it would probably look like this, right? And that's cool. Sounds like you really like it. I'm not saying I, like I'm not saying I, stuff. just because I'm understanding what the artist was it trying to like say doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> I still agree that it's a little bit easy, but it's okay. It's not, you know, it's, it's, in the it's a little more subtle than Darth fucking Trump, but okay, oh. you know. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> is it? Oh, is it? Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, basically, what the back says confirms my analysis, so let's move on. <laughs> it's a well executed piece, I'll give it that. There's Kelsius Collins. Oh, and he's sitting finished. in the audience, and that doesn't mean he's going to get off the hook. <laughs> uh, what does it say? Lee Lutter? No. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, you don't get to Sorry. weigh in yet. Just imagine he's not here. That is, I believe, French for wrestling. Oh, it is? Okay, thanks. Cool. This looks like one of those shitty Mexican luchador figures. It is based on it. Is. Yeah, I know. I know that. It's, it's like a booze baby. So I'm not supposed to confirm your little... <laughs> Where you at? Yes, you can confirm oh. my opinion. Where you at? Who? This thing's pretty sweet. I don't know. <laughs> I like it. It's silly. You're just afraid he's going to kick your ass. I yeah. am also afraid. He's kind of big. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's right there. It's hard, Hi. It's hard to do, it's huh? cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking dope. <laughs> Let's read the back. Deep in the swamps of the Gulf lies an abundance of rogues, pirates, devils, runaways, and unknown unknowns. It is, and it's is done in a very scrawling script here. It is in these dark bayous that magic lives with a J. There are times during the carnival that these denizens will appear in the crescent port and walk amongst the people, blending into the crowds of costume revelers, unscathed by the usual leers of confusion and disgust. One of our swamp folk is Lee Latour, a slimy organic mess of a fighter from the wild Orleans parish. Real name is unknown, age is unknown, built for three, but for 300 years, Le Luteur has been seen <laughs> performing his theater in the round fighting acts of the Hyatt Carnival. This is sort of costume tradition by local. It's never been known that he is an eternal creature uh, named Frank. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Do you think you could read this more dynamic? I think you could. Okay, I, I mean, I think that's cool. What I like about this is it's just a character that isn't necessarily calling out to a specific, you know, nostalgia. It's like a New Orleans, you know, and the bayou is a mysterious, interesting place full of mystery that's worthy of explanation, you know, exploration. And he also paints it. Right. It's like an original painting on the back. And the, my favorite thing about this is that shoulder seam that goes up the arm because all the, the seam line on all these these bootleg lucha figures um, is. Just so dramatic and exaggerated, and you, you included that, and it's and it's pretty fucking cool. And I like that you were willing to take a risk and just make something that didn't say fucking Star Wars Trump on it. Ah, <laughs> you know, and you know, try to you know, try try to try to you know try to describe to something you know try to at least delve into a world that is uh you know is yet to be explored in this realm. I also like how it. Dances around in the package. My only criticism about this is like, I feel like the way you have it packaged here is the painting is competing with the figure. You know, like, I don't like the way the bubble goes over the main part of the illustration. That's totally kind of the charm. charm. Maybe. I would like to see the... I you could like totally see that, like, in an alley in some store yeah, in Mexico. I guess but the artwork's good. I mean, it's, a, it's the, piece of, the piece of the figure and the, and the background, to me, are fighting a little bit for my attention. And maybe if you could figure that out, unless that's what you're going for, but then that's the card would have to be like that big. Listen, man, there's some creative motherfuckers out here who know how to solve these problems. I, listen, I have to say at least one constructively criticizing thing about you just make all up of anything anything to say. No, no but I mean, it just to say. listen. <laughs> when I show people my work, I'm like, okay, I'm glad you like it, but what could be better about it? And you know, I don't need smoke blowing up my ass. Um, this is gonna come out the bottom. Right? Okay. Let's pull it up. Wretched Balls, Scum and Villainy edition. So this is by UME Toys, uh, Richard Page in the UK. That's a famous guy, isn't it? He did all the Geek Walk series. I, this is one of my favorites of the show. I love Mad Balls. This was kind of a Bosque inspired Mad Ball. Yeah, it is a Bosque Mad Ball. He sculpted isn't it? it from scratch. I just. He sent me a photo of it. I was very excited about it. Yeah, it's cool. It would be so much fucking cooler if it didn't have the Star Wars font and just was on its own because it doesn't totally be Bosque and it's like really neat. I hope but he continues. I hope he does a Greedo like, or a uh, Bosque. Uh, that's of really it. fucking neat. And like, yeah, it's really cool. He's a great sculptor too. 
really fun. Anybody in the audience have an opinion? I like the Tommy did a fucking killer job with, with extra glitter glossy. on it. Well, it's just extra drippy glossy, man. It's you know what shiny. sucks about this? It's not <laughs> a real <shiny>. man. <clears throat> oh, fuck <laughs> off, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's really cool. furry. I like it. Makes me, oh, sorry. I'm really trying really hard to find something negative to say about yeah, this. No, you can't. <laughs> Dude, you can even defend yeah, yourself and put it in a it's sock. A it's, oh, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool. I, I think it's a homework. It'd be yeah, pretty awesome if it was rotocasted, so it wasn't so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, here's another Riker oh, piece. Cross-section yeah. Bart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a, a Bart thing, and it's half robot and half regular Bart. And it says in big letters on the bottom, not a toy. And it's typical Rika presentation packaging, excellent quality flat back thing. Um, yeah, cool. What's your negative thing to say? <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Does that, do you want to say anything? Do you think there's anything whack about this? Whack? Yeah. I mean, it's well executed and everything. I don't know. I like the way the, the package and the figure are, you know, the, the dividing line like, is just... You know what I, I just don't really get the whole oh, art oh, terminator. I, I'm not a graphic right. designer, but I would have preferred. Sorry, Rekka, but I would have preferred the yellow on this side. And why? If this was flopped to contrast. Oh, the you don't like the way it mirrors. That you would prefer it was like. I think it would be. It'd be easier to see mm. if the checking. yellow was on the silver and the. Whatever. Yeah, you're, I mean these are oh. nitpicking details. Because there's nothing else bad to say about it, oh. is there? The I mean, <laughs> it's. I mean. It doesn't have a hip hop reference. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah. yeah, what happened? He fell like, short this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's only two things here. Going from the UK. It's a follow, <laughs> follow up to the cross section droid. I'm, a, I'm, yeah, I'm a fan of the fact that it looks like the Terminator underneath there. But he did the He-Man previously, the cross section He-Man. Sure. Yeah. Isn't this just like a fucking Jason Freeney thing? I don't think Jason Freeney owns that whole thing, but. And that'd be that, cause. That's it. Check the trademarks on it. Yeah. I mean, look, there's not that many original ideas here. Like, it's like, it's there are some people who have excellent ideas, and there are other people who have excellent execution, and there's some people who And then there's both. people who have neither. That is true. <laughs> Where do you fall in that? I think it's pretty clear. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is by Carlos Ramirez, one of the date farmers, formerly a member of the date farmers. This is the fucking great. Date farmer paintings that are behind us right here. This is excellent. Um, he's made the figure from scratch, had him cast in resin, he hand painted them. He, he draws the art, then he, I think he photocopies it, glues it to the panel, um, There's a, some em sort embellishes of clear coat it, on it. touches it up, it's just... It's, pa it's painterly, it looks like, it, it, it riffs, what the fuck? You can ask Sarah, he texted me a photo and I like got teary, like I thought it was just so <laughs> next level. This like, reminds me of like the Turkish uh, it's, Star Wars posters. It's or, everything I want in a figure. I mean, I'm okay with this Star Wars play because it's really sort of... I think James, so, has, James has something to say. Yeah. I can interject something if it's not a trade secret, uh, but I... I did the casting on these James guys. James did cast them. And um, congratulations. The prototype. Am I allowed? <laughs> am I allowed to say anything on the prototype of the build? You can like, say whatever you want. Right. He can cut it out later. It's fun. <laughs> it's uh, it was pretty fun sculpt because it's mostly balsa wood. Yeah, mm -hmm. this thing's fucking rad. I got oh, the original piece was made out of balsa wood. Yeah, the sculpture was mostly right. balsa wood. I mean, that's what I think is cool about all this guy's shit. Is it does have it feels like art, you know, it like even though it's a sort of production or an addition, it, it has the rough quality, you can sort of sense and touch the materials, it doesn't look like just some sort of pristine piece of plastic, you know, it has the textures and the grains on it and the, the paint gradients yeah. and shit like that. It's fucking sweet, just it's so wood. hand done, style -y. Sarah's it's walking so into, into frame right now. Oh, oh, what? What? Was it this I see, I see. I got to see you last Here's week when they were still in Yeah, yeah I mean, this is an original date. But this is fun. also... What? Mm. Oh, no, I'm just saying they're super fun. I got to see them all lined up last week when they were all set up, and they're just, they look, they're just so fucking awesome. I mean, this is... Up in that's such a one-off cool way. Yeah, this is what the, so the sort of inspiration to these things are, which are these sort of weird folk arty as you really like sort of amalgamations of Star Wars characters, and this is a really good sort of interpretation of this style. I dig the random, like, little stuff, like, painted on, like, the cross and the ST, like, it's just all fucking little sweet little 
just little tiny shit that's yeah, so that's, fucking that's cool. cool. And it's just Star Warsy enough. Yeah. So I'm loving really yeah, hard. This is really fucking neat. For I hope so. It has a little dick too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a There's a little yeah. right there. Uh, I'm lobbying really hard for Comic Con for him to make an X Wing in a box. Oh, wow, be a That's bitch. really what I want. I don't know how much that would be or how we would sell them, but I know I want to own one. So. I mean, this is good because, I mean, it's like you could tell that that artist did it. You know, it's like it's not just like something that looks like it was just sort of done by numbers. You know, it's like that his drawing style is distinctive. <laughs> That's generally the best kind of art is when you can recognize someone. No matter what it is, no matter what they're applying their thing to. I would say of all my criticisms of you, like, that's the, the you know, the one thing about your work is it, you know that it, you did it. That's a criticism? No, that was a compliment. Oh. Thanks. I said, in spite of all <laughs> Man, my criticism. Man, so good. I think I know the one In spite of it. In spite of what? How terrible it is? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Do okay. you want more? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. The purple pants are really doing it for me. Okay, he bought these for me. It's true. You're he bought them for me like back. a year ago, and then you were, couldn't mail, you couldn't part with them. That's true. I had to fucking starch them a few times organically. <laughs> <laughs> These have yet to be washed. All right, this is this, this is by Two Bit Hack and it's Star Killer Base Sanitation <coughs> Department, FN two one eight seven First Order Star Stormtrooper, and it's Finn, our friend from Force Awakens, I, I out, out of out of his Stormtrooper gear and and in his sanitation gear because it's a throwaway line that he worked in the sanitation. Right, part and of I totally. Didn't get that. He had to explain it to me. You don't, because you hate the new Star Wars movies. I watched it. You it watched it once work. and you didn't absorb it. I'm sorry. I mean, I got this instantly. I saw Force Awakens probably 15 times. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. No wonder you don't get any work done. I watched it on a fucking plane. First of all, you watched it 15 times. Can you please, please, please qualify what you mean? Don't get any work done. See those the cases over there? Do you see? And and the boxes. The pallets of things you have in your basement that I made at the fruits of my labor, mm -hmm. and you say I don't work? I didn't say you don't work. You just said you don't. That's why you don't work. You just said I don't work. I think you don't manage your time quite That's too not the well. same thing as not working. Okay, you, I stand corrected. I'm you not lazy. Work. I am not lazy. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. Wow. How the fuck do you know? Do you live with me? Uh, I, sometimes for me it's like pulling teeth to get because you, to you do ask things. me to do things that I don't make money off of, so I have to prioritize them. <laughs> like what? Like design suckle figures. You don't make money off of Not that? Not that much. I remember cutting you a pretty fat fucking <laughs> <laughs> And it got done, right? Eventually. <laughs> Dude, it's tough. So man. I am it's not. Tough. Uh, it's, it's good. Tough. It's good to know. It's I am tough. not a priority. That's fine. It's not that you're not a priority. There's just like a lot of shit going on. It's a lot of shit. I appreciate everything you've ever done for me. Thank you. I really do. That's really. You could be a little nicer though. <laughs> um, I, think for, I, I think for the sake of the show, I should just continue to be a dick to you because it yeah. makes people laugh. Yeah. Yeah. So. Let's do that. Um, we, we can, we can I, kiss I, and make up after the show. You don't take this. This doesn't work for you? Well, he's got beef. Right? I don't have beef. Let's totally get it out of here. Let's get it out of here. What's the problem? Be dude, honest. I totally, be the healy of this episode. Dude, I totally no, had to get... Be the I just don't fucking care. I totally had to get, like, uh, Dollar Slice and 2-Bit Hack to, like, kiss and make no, up in this show. No, you fucking... Really? <laughs> What's the problem? I, I have know. no idea. The guy fucking has a little Don't start it. Up. Whatever. Anyway, you made nice. You did a good job. You made the beef go away. Oh I'm proud God. of you. It was so <laughs> hard for oh, you to, like, to just. <laughs> Why do grown men go running to you, Dove? Over me. Why do grown men <laughs> fight over fucking action figures? Why can't they just <laughs> fucking talk to me? Dude, yo, just talk to me. Don't bother this guy. For fuck's sake, he's not my dad. God. He kind of is. Well, dude, he's kind of everybody <laughs> in here's fucking dad. bothering him. He's got important stuff. He doesn't have to deal with your problems with me. Fuck off. Okay, oh. I'm like the lightning rod for John. Somebody like, should someone has a figure problem. It's like, you know, he threatened to kill me. Can you talk to him? I didn't. Know. <laughs> hey, John, uh, you know what? You shouldn't threaten to kill me. Uh, kill people. And he's like, 
Yeah, you're probably right. It's like, maybe you should go say you're sorry. He's like, no, make okay. a toy about it. That's, that's how we deal with all our problems. Nobody would be sitting here. We'd all be, we'd all be institutionalized right, well, if we It's not beef. Shit. It's fucking boring. Yay, like a fucking action adventure people body with like a, a mop. Cool. I don't know. The, the graphics are fucking boring. Like, whatever, dude. Like, um, it's not beef. Sorry. So it was just about this particular figure that everyone it's got just, so upset? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I like Tubit right? Hack, and I think he has some cool you? ideas. Nice guy. Um, this piece is humorous. I mean, again, it's like you know, it, it's ri- it's it's one of those things. Where, like, you really gotta like Star Wars to get this. I like that he's willing to take a risk on a very fucking obscure detail about Star Wars that nobody's gonna understand unless you're a fucking. You know, one of those people. Yep. And, you know, and that's cool because it's not an obvious Star Wars reference. Uh, that being said, it's it's very in universe. You know, it's like I've always liked when Star Wars was taken out of Star Wars and applied to something else, combined with something else. This is just sort of like an in 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 world thing, so it's not my favorite. Well, is it a commentary on how the commercial endeavor has reached and tried to make as many damn figures as possible and so this is as obscure and obscure and obscure to show the how deep a dive that's the, good that's okay. good you're right but it you're is right. a commentary but look at the back. there's a recycle logo yeah i mean that speaks to exactly what thomas said a good point you're right that is a good point i didn't think about that and it, it is true because it's a preposterous figure but you could almost see Hasbro making it when they ran out of ideas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Mail away, dude. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I, 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 I think it's, I think it's cool. It's fun. It's like if you're gonna do a Star Wars thing, this is a funny. Good job, Tom. Problem. Now we come around on this figure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not against riffing on Star Wars. Obviously, it just I feel like at this point, you know, you gotta find your own little angle, and it's cool. I what I loved about this may not be relevant to the piece, but it's like, this is the first stormtrooper we've ever seen in Star Wars with his mask off, and now we know where all the black people went. You know, they got the shitty jobs. And that's kind of a, uh, is that not relevant? Okay. <laughs> um, right, does that not make sense to you? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Um, Everything you say makes sense to you. That's not true. Uh, this is a follow up to our uh, Say Utini by Buzzard Guts. What do you think? I fucking love it, dude. I mean, it's just so <laughs> goofy. I, I don't know. It's so <laughs> left field. You like, can't see it. It's flocked. It's like got the fucking shredded paper, the boxes, tits, like the bubble. It fits just perfect. I mean, dude, okay, Star Wars, but that's fucking ridiculous. It's Star Wars. And it's even the holiday up. special, dude. It's fucking fresh. Look at Lumpy, dude. Like fucking with the bowcaster because the red rider is fucking. Oh my god! You'll you'll blast your eye out. It's too good. For those of you who can't see it, it's a a Wookiee leg lamp, which was (laughs) a fucking leg. I mean, again, you really gotta get Christmas story and Star Wars to understand this, but those are pretty obscure. Yeah, but it's like I, I mean, in a way, I do like these things that appeal to like the super studied nerd. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, you can just watch TV on Christmas Day on your channel and understood yeah. this shit. <laughs> yeah, but to understand the the life day the life shit, day you thing, know, yeah, the, the holiday true. special yeah. special stuff and all that is that's true. is a bit obtuse. I still think though it would just appeal to any motherfucker walking by just because it's so wookie leg lamp. It's they wouldn't even need to know. It's like holy sheep shit, Chewbacca's family. Look at the little like kids in a rabbit suit. I need it. <laughs> but I mean, this is also... You, rabbit suit, man. When, when I dissed the same teeny piece, you explained to me why this series was funny because it's like, he it, it, is, it is autobiographical in the way he was like, whenever he went to the video store to get a movie and he would get something other than Star Wars, he really what? secretly just wanted and, Star Wars. So he projected Star Wars onto every other movie that he ever watched. So this is an interesting lesson just about art in general. It's like when you create context for art, it makes sense yeah. and you like it and when you don't understand it when you don't know who the artist is then you kind of don't like it yeah but then it also asks the question is like is, is art successful if you have to know the backstory well, I'll tell you, or is it so uh, only, it has to speak like, completely on its just own just look at it like dude I mean okay so if you knew to know the backstory like 
Imagine Chewbacca losing his fucking shit over a big prize. Dude, it's awesome. Last boss killed it with could, this thing. Could you do that again? <laughs> that was amazing. Never. Not for you, never. <laughs> It was it's it's well executed, I'll give it that. <laughs> and really affordable, it's uh, 30 bucks. Do you think these things are going to be selling for millions of dollars one day? No. No, because I think it's possible to go and make more. Like if this is successful, he can make another version. Um, I'm talking like, say, 50 years from now. Millions of dollars? No. I think um, we're in a little bubble here. Um, there's a lot of interesting things happening. Uh, if I'm able to eventually get a book out about all of this stuff, I think that it will carve out a little niche. It is possible that if it is exposed to a lot of new people who try and go back and get you know, the older generation of stuff. You know, it's like if someone wanted to get a Sucklord 66 today um, that you released in 2005, like, they're not going to get one for less than $1,000. However, you only made 50 of those, but there's another figure that you only made 10 of that, you know, is still selling for a regular price, you know, 100 bucks, 150 bucks. So for, the reason for that is because people want that first figure. So out of, you know, all of the things that are released, yeah, there's going to be some, you know, there, I'll put it to you this way. There will be some people in this field who will grow out of this and become very well known for potentially other reasons. And this early work that there's only 35 of um, could, you know, could really uh, do something. There's this, I watched this documentary on the plane. But that's not why you should buy it. <laughs> well, you never know. I mean, there's, I watch, there's that documentary about the Brillo, the Andy Warhol Brillo box, mm -hmm. taught, and it traces a family who owned a, one of Andy Warhol's Brillo box was just like a wooden box and he silk screened the Brillo graphic on it and sold them for like a hundred bucks or something right. and everyone looked at these things as like this isn't art this is bullshit this is a joke oh. and and like some guy just thought it was cool and bought it for like a thousand bucks and like sold it a few years after that and then subsequently like 20 30 years later it sold for three million dollars at auction and it just sort of traces how it went from that point from point A to point B and I do think that some of this stuff may actually do that at some point. We can only hope. We can only <laughs> hope. And we hope that we're alive when that happens. I guess my point about saying that that's not the reason you should buy it, I hope that people buy this stuff because well, that they, was, they, they like it. That was also what they it. talked about in that movie. It was like the guy who bought it, you know, didn't buy it as an investment. He just thought it was cool. And that's the best He reason. regretted selling it for, you know, uh, 5000 bucks instead of $3 million bucks, But I'll tell you that when there is some industry or a hobby where a lot of people get in specifically uh, as an investment or to make money um, that's usually good in the beginning and then it usually falls flat, generally speaking. Pops. <laughs> no. I mean, I just think some of all, in, in, at least in the 20th century or whatever, I can't speak and I'm not an art historian, but it's like most of the art movements, you know, that have gone on to be significant things at the time they were happening, the art establishment didn't think they were art. It was specifically, right. you know, held at arm's length, like, that's not art. And then and there's this sort of weird, fertile moment where, like, the movement itself is, mm -hmm. is very productive, but it's happening in this sort of anaerobic atmosphere where, like, there aren't the pressures of the art market, you know, influencing it. And that's where I think some of the best stuff gets made. I think that that, to a point, uh, ultimately... You know, it's like if you go to the Museum of Contemporary Art here in Los Angeles, there's nothing contemporary in there. Like, what's the most recent thing? It's in like there? just From still the 50s, 50s and 60s. It's still like, you know, Warhol and Rusha and you know, like there's. Nothing. But that's kind of where it stops. That's where it stops. That's there's no graffiti or street art in there. They did. They had the most successful show they've ever had was the graffiti. But even show. that was a controversy. The the the, Def, the Jeffrey Deitch crew. And they fired him. Yeah, because it was too radical, right. and even though a lot of that work was already 20, 30 years old anyway. Yeah, all the, so the problem is, is that the, the, mu the work that gets into the muse museums is dictated by these real, like, you know, big wigs and people who have, you know, billion dollar Do you have something to say? And the, huh? it's those Do people who really determine think, what gets into the museum. Didn't they have like a vinyl piece in there at some point, or? In where? In uh, the Contemporary Museum, 
of art? That's possible. Was there a, a dunny or something? Yeah, it was a fucking dunny, right? Wasn't there like by I think uh, there was Husky? A, I think there was a <clears throat> dunny wound up in the Whitney or something at some point. Oh, was that the Whitney? Okay. Yeah, but we don't know if it was like, it hasn't been, just because it appears in a museum here and there, it's not been institutionalized. I mean, yeah. I, we've all, some of us have sold stuff in Christie's and that didn't make it important. Give a fuck. Christie sells lots of stuff. But, yeah. Um, unfortunately, it, well, I guess my point is that for stuff to be, <laughs> um, for, for art to be super successful today, it, it's really a, you know a small group of people who are deciding to spend a lot of money on certain things. And um, the best thing about what I think I'm doing when I'm creating a platform for all these other artists to create their own stuff and sell it at a show is that it's accessible. That yeah, you can get a handmade piece of whatever for thirty bucks. Sure, 30 and bucks, some things bucks. will sink and some things will swim, and it's like it's it's great that there's just sort of this place where it's all sort of equal, and that's funny that that's the next piece. But I mean, I think that's I think that's I think it makes sense that like a contemporary art museum is a few decades behind what's actually happening at the moment, because if you want to be a museum, you can't just necessarily jump on trends. You know, you have to wait for something to have sort of taken some sort of hold some sort of permanent hold on a culture before you can consider it like a museum worthy piece of why? art. I think there's some amazing things happening now, happening ten mm -hmm. years ago. Why does it why is it the same group of, you know, douchebags just deciding like what is good art? Like I, I mean, don't think it's it's not meaning whether it's good or bad. It's just hey, can you get me one of those too? I think it's more just like, you know, what's going to last? Like, it's great, you know, like, what's, it, I, you know, I think, it's, I think it's okay for the institutions to be conservative. Uh, all right, here we got another piece. This is, now I have a lot to say about this. The uh, Preacher, Preacher, Pollution is the Solution figure by a fellow called Wolf Pitts. Now this is his first carded figure that he's ever made. You don't say. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, it appears to be a creature of the Black Lagoon dressed up as a Catholic priest, maybe from The Exorcist. Do you deserve water right there? Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You couldn't go like a, a one hour episode without a beer? I could. I don't know if that's got AIDS, man. Oh, jeez. I mean, not for me, but here, I mean, just the air, you know, it grows. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> what do you think of this piece? Oh, I mean, hold it up for the audience. I don't know. It's, I, what do you want me to say? Dude? I don't know. I mean, you're on the couch. Oh my god! I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like no. Like Come obviously, it's very it. fucking interestingly done. Uh, why is it a creature? If you just spell the word creature. Read the back. Uh, for everyone to hear. All right, the preacher creature. With lives gusto, in an interpretive reading. Have fucking dyslexia. I'm not even gonna fucking speak English. All right, fine. In, in tongues, you know. Um, the castings to... really. I don't know if they used a. It doesn't look like they used a pressure pot. Um, I saw an image online of him like baking it. In Who the is this guy? I don't, don't want to talk shit. I know this guy. <laughs> what you don't about. want to talk shit? Well, okay, do you dude. Do you, do you, like, it's not very really fucking it? well executed. There's a lot of bubbles. You should, if you're gonna paint it, show him all the gaps and stuff because the paint can go over all that stuff anyways. And I don't know, like. Cool. I like the suck lord, so I made a suck lord card back. I don't know. Okay, it, like, give me that then. Here's well, my opinion. That. Double motherfucking fist in this shit. Man. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the execution of the figure is kind of cool. It's a creature of the Black Lagoon, and it's very. It, we love the creature of the Black Lagoon, and he did this weird kind of undershadowing with the black. It's the the lighting on the figure, the forced lighting on the figure is cool. Yes, there's bubbles in it. Yes, it looks like it was sculpted out of Sculpey. It's a little crude, but the figure itself has some attraction to it. It feels sort of emperor-ish, but I like the paint job. I'm really not feeling the package design, and not because it looks exactly like the layout of a vintage succadelic piece. It's not because I'm personally offended. I mean, every, I mean, it's simple and boring, but like this line and the, the black on the color with the Rocky Horror font and the way this, even the shape of where he put his logo and the way the back looks with... It looks very much like a vintage succadelic piece with this splattering thing, and that's okay. I'm just saying it's not. It's not. I'm not offended because it's my, he's ripping off my shit. It's just like it's so clearly, you know, derivative of someone else's work without putting anything 
new on it. And at this day and age, with so many people doing this shit, you're gonna go for this look. It's just not happening. It's just not happening. I mean, it's, Am I wrong? I, does it look like my old shit? It does, but I think But that's not great. ironically or purposefully. I, for your first release, like, you something want to come out swing big. Is there a this reason is why it looks like the fucking suck it out creature figure package? Yes. Because it was successful when you did it? That's not a good reason to do something. Why not? Someone, someone pays it's homage. To it's you? not. Is it an homage or a ripoff? Is what there the a difference the between a difference? A, there's a big difference. Oh, it's geez. a huge difference. Am I wrong? I. You act so aggrieved when I say something intelligent. I. I just wonder, <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. I, I just wonder, like, you know, you question my motives for criticizing this. I question all of your criticism because I, I don't know where it's coming from. Am I a dumbass? Okay, so is the, is the purpose of this show for you to criticize these people in order to help them? Or are you just yeah. insanely jealous that like you've kind of created this scene and then there's these people who are kind of nipping at your feet and then you kind of want to put them down? No, I don't care about I don't need to put any of these people down. I'm comfortable in my position. I don't need to put anyone down. I, so I'm just saying it's like if we're going to talk, I'm talking about this for the, for the pleasure and the enjoyment and just sort of like if this is what we do and this is our, one of our chief interests. Uh -huh. what, and pleasure we, and enjoyment of what? Just consuming this you mean work. just for the people who are watching? No, to consume this <laughs> work. We can just say all sorts of funny shit and it has no relevance to... We are <coughs> focusing on, this is what we trade in. Okay, so here's the thing. You're kind of like the godfather of this scene. You created it. I just don't think you need to go around like asserting yourself in a way that makes you look kind of insecure. Do I, am I coming across insecure? Yup. At times. Really? You do. The whole time? <laughs> not the whole time. The whole time. In this case? Yeah. Not, no, not in this case. In which in case? case? In general. It sometimes. There's, there's a lot of and so like what? Not all the time. Well, just, I'm not, listen, in I'm not instance. being defensive. I just want to know, you know, because instance. maybe that's in something instance. I should correct. What? If anything, it's it's a culmination. Sometimes people will be like, eh, I'll backtrack on that. And it just sort of adds up. And it's like maybe there's some insecurity behind it. You know, it's like it's not. It's not okay, a fact. Mean, I, if you don't, well, it's I mean, what things might people people might you know sort of come to that conclusion. You know what I mean? So he's got a good point. So maybe you should be a little more careful. Like so, if you're trying to give someone advice, I think that's nice. I think that is like a very like fatherly, godfatherly kind of thing to do. And like you know, this is a guy's first figure, and you have something constructive to say. But sometimes it comes out at like kind of like you know caddy like. You know, like, this is my shit, and you're, like, stepping I on my I think I gave you a pretty big fucking preamble about how this wasn't that, George. I'll say it, because he can't say it without getting yelled at. It, it, Someone shouldn't just rip his old thing. If you're going to do, if you're going to rip him off, rip him off and do it different, or better, or a different purposely. style. Just don't do his thing already. He's already it's done not it. exactly his thing. He doesn't. He own, can't say he that because then he looks green. like he's nitpicking somebody. But like, you know, the suckler did not like trademark green. Like, no, yeah, but if you if it looks like up, if you put if together. you put that add image together. with that logo and that yeah. style and then you splatter it, you're someone's going to think that he did it because that was something that he did already. And I does totally this only thought exist? it was one of his on first sight. On first sight. Oh, but isn't that what bootleg means? Yeah. Like, you know, Do you think he did it because that was his first bootleg piece, so why not fucking let's be funny and do bootleg more bootleg 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 Morgan? Well, this is like people have already bootleg. done it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not justifying it, you know, you know, but I'm just saying I'm trying to put some reason behind it because it confuses funny, me too. The funny thing is I was on a panel at Decon and I was sitting next to Brian Flynn from Super 7. <clears> and the guy was asking, Mark Bridgie was asking, like, what do you think is like ridiculous in the scene? And he said, what was ridiculous is someone said, like, well, purple's my color, dude. You know, I make the, I'm the dude who makes the purple shit, right? And then I chimed in. I said, it's even funnier in the bootleg scene because someone comes up with, like, some bootleg and then someone else makes something similar. And then they're like, dude, that was my bootleg. You know, and it's like, it's the fucking creature. Like, yes, you've done a lot of work with the creature. I, I, you know, it's like, are you trying to help the guy? Are you trying to put him down? I, I don't know... To be honest with you, I could care one way or the other what this guy does. Why do we even do this? Like, I'm just saying, like, I know we want, we want to create something entertaining for the folks at home, obviously. Um, and people like to hear us fight and for me to, like, you know, put you in your place. But I, I, 
I don't know. I just you're saying my my criticism is not constructive. Okay. Well, you said you said something to me the other day, and you said to me, um, "Why don't you be a little more selective in what you carry?" Yes, I did. Why say don't that. you edit a little more? I did say that. All right. And so it's hard for me. Like when he approached me, he said, "Hey, I got this idea. It's called Preacher Creature," and he sent me a, a picture of the the figure. Mm -hmm. And I don't get to see the packaging until like you know two days before he sent it. So first of all, I'm not the art director. Um, I am taking chances on a lot of. I'm offering a platform to a lot of artists who want to express themselves in this way. All right. There's only a limited amount of ways that you can do that. All right. Everything after a while is going to start looking you know like one another and there's some people who are going to stand out and there's some people who are not going to be as successful and that's okay um but my job is to you know because my quote my my response to you was how many sucklord figures have i carried in the past three years right how many have you made for me to sell i don't know not, one. not too many one right yeah okay so kind of the big the bigger the name Right, the less likely that those people need and me. And why do you think that is? Because they don't need me to sell the stuff. Because the maybe they don't. Established person doesn't want their shit sitting next to something like this, no. like a newcomer. Not this is fine. This is nice. I don't want to. I oh, don't. This is nice now. I don't. I'm just saying. I don't want this person to come away from this thing thinking, oh, I suck. I'm not going to make any more Look, toys. Not that he would. All right. But that's not my goal. Not, my goal is not to discourage this person right. from creating I, work. I, well, look, can, I don't think I'm embarrassing I, myself with what I'm carrying. You're not, but I'm just saying there's you, other artists that might not want to be put on the same level and good as for a new them. person. And good for them. If they are on a different level and they don't need me or my help or what I can provide for them, good for them. I'm very proud of them to have been to move on. Right. That means maybe they've made it in the world. Right? <laughs> exactly, you laugh, right? Because it means it didn't fucking make it. So like, No, I'm <laughs> laughing at like, what you define as making To be it. critical that your product is next to someone else's who's not as good, you think that that makes you look bad. Maybe it makes you look better. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Maybe. So this is not related to that part of it, but this is related to the packaging that you're talking about here. This is, you just help, you just went through 15 figures that were this style bootleg thing that are riffing on what you used to do, you still do. Um, and none of them look like his art. Here, here. We got to this one and this is where it's breaking down because this, this looks like his old packaging. And, not and that's what we're saying. It's good and we're not thing. saying it's good or bad. We're not even talking about the guy's art or if it's good or bad. We're talking about why does it have to look exactly like something you used to do where 15 things before it are the same style thing, they're bootleg figures, and none of it looks like something that you've done. Look, I can't speak for all artists in the world, okay? But as far as I can tell, right, people do the best they can, right? And this might, and I'm not speaking for him, I don't know him that well, but this might be the limit of what his capabilities are. You know what I'm saying? And that is part of, you look at some of these figures and how they're cast and how, like, you know, his whole brand has been based on how shitty the actual figure is. Right? And think of all of the people who are, have all this self-deprecating humor about how crappy their work is based on the tone that he has set for the whole scene about how shitty the work is. Right? I mean, it's called suckadelic. Right? So it's like... It, yes, but there's a twist to all. <laughs> yeah, of there is. All I'm saying is that I'm providing a platform for people to express themselves and um, not everyone has the same capabilities and that's okay. And some of it sells, and if it gets to a point where the stuff is not selling, the market will dictate. But should someone with lesser capabilities be talked about as favorably as someone with greater capabilities? It, that is a good point, but they still, you know, I'm giving them the... <laughs> you don't put yourself in the position to be that guy. You're not the arbitrator of taste. You just create a... a, 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 a you have right. an equal hey, platform. Okay, look, if there were a thousand people making figures trying to get them on my table at a show, then yeah, I could be a whole lot pickier, right? right. But, now, but now we are drawing, you know, in a pool of maybe 50 or 100 people who have a, a really hard time producing this stuff. It is time consuming uh, for someone who's making their first carded figure, you know, they have problems like, just the, the act of getting something done into market, right, is right. a huge endeavor. The fact that it's good or not, like, that's just, like, that's the next level. Like, you know, like what you're saying and all, that's cool. So, like, 
maybe you're saying, oh, this is the best they can do. Maybe. You just said it's their first figure. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't some people pay their dues and maybe perfect, get a little bit better with their craft? And, and they're how, how, wait, how, how do they do that? Let me finish. Like, get better with their execution. Mm -hmm. They do it by fucking doing re releases and repeating it so they don't put out something like this next to something like him or Ron English or mm -hmm. like people that have paid their dues that actually worked hard to get to your table mm -hmm. when it used to be something kind of more elite and important. No, people and like your first fucking release at a DKA booth, like, you know, fucking refine your craft a okay. little bit. But don't that, like. But that was, you were talking about hard work. That was hard work. Yes. Well, okay. I'm just saying. You just like, don't like you don't, it, and that's no, okay. No, I'm not saying I don't like it, dude. I'm saying execution wise, refine your craft. Don't get huffy more. with me. You get huffy with me, dude. Let's, <laughs> let's go back to classical art for a minute. As and an art Jesus. student, often the assignment is to replicate the Mona Lisa or replicate some significant piece because by replicating it, you actually learn something about it. And this can, in many ways, be, as you said earlier, this is the level this fellow is at, and it's a high mark for him to go after one of the roots of this scene and to achieve that. And the fact that it would give him confidence then maybe to now ex start exploring his own voice. But without confidence, without a backlog of experience, I think it's a noble thing to say, let me see if I can do at least as good as something that has historically been established. It's sort of like is my effort towards that's, that. That's a valid point to justify the existence of this thing, but that doesn't mean should one of these imitations of the Mona Lisa hang next to the Mona Lisa right. in the museum. Yeah. That's another point. Yeah, yes. It also doesn't get sold. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sold kitchen, you know, I, just, I guess I just like. take issue with what you're saying about paying your dues. Like making the well, figures and trying to Okay, excuse me then. Let's subtract paying your dues. All right. Fuck paying your dues. How about refine your craft and don't make something like this for your first piece and drop it on the table with a bunch of higher end artists who have done a lot of work. I can tell you that the, that the people all. who bought it didn't oh, look at I'm, that. I'm and not care. knocking. I'm just saying for no, you know most of this work. Kind of most of this work is conceptual. But, I mean that it, the the Lord is a conceptual artist. It is not mm -hmm. his execution <laughs> that people are paying. Well, for. we're bringing up the discussion of you know. How about, you know, be a little bit more um, discreet or have a little bit more discretion with the curation of what's at your table. That's all. If, Just discussing if, that. Hey, if I have... But I'm not knocking. Man, I love your no, shit. If you know. there was a, a bigger <laughs> pool to <laughs> choose from... I'm not shitting in the pool, man. What I'm saying is, if there was a bigger pool to choose from... Is that right? Candy bar or two? Then... There isn't big enough pool to choose from, man. That cat could have done a few of his own indie releases and then been on your table. I mean, had a finer it's piece, true. they would have been he, dope. I mean, dude. I'm your sorry, table don't need DKA to do list. your first piece. You don't need DKA to release your first piece. Dude. Oh, sorry, it's his first carded piece. He has right. made other pieces before. All so, right. Um, carded. Anyway, well, let's move on. Okay. Ask a question wow. real quick? Sure. Coming from somebody who has bootlegged your stuff before, and whose first figure was in an um, imitation of granite was different and it had its own spin on it. Um, you know what the difference is? Why, like, that was okay? Is because you asked permission. Mm -hmm. And so he got to, like, you know, do his, like, you know, yeah. do, 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 and, you know, you were christened and then it was fine. But besides all that. Now, if that dude had called him and said, dude, I'm a huge fan, I'm going to make this creature figure, do you mind if I make it, like, green? And he'd be like, oh, yeah, do whatever you want. And then, like, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah, but the thing is just because, I mean, people do that all the time. It's like, oh, I like your work, and I do, here's my tribute piece. And it's like, I'm, can I do it? I was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. I don't care. I'm not in a position to tell you no. You know, just fucking do it. And even if I tell you no, then you'd be like, oh, fuck that guy. I'm going to do it anyway. Fucking <laughs> rock and roll. But it doesn't, <laughs> just because I say it's okay, that doesn't mean it's an advisable thing to do. You know, it's fuck. like. But, all right. I, so point. so had, point. It, had it not been for Dove allowing me the chance to release the figure as my first figure, it was Dove, Galactic Jerbags, they had their own booth. Had it not been, if they didn't have their booth, it would have been through Dove anyway, you know what I mean? Um, but to put out my, out my first figure and build up that back catalog of work and start paying my dues, but that's where it started from, um, this scene wouldn't really exist. And as a scene and an art movement in itself, uh, if you don't have people that come and go, then you don't really have, you know, you know, movement. That's if, true. But you have, you have stable people. So, so, I mean, how many people besides, say, dollar-sized bootlegs 
or Woot Bear or Special Ed had their own boots that do carded blistered figures, you know, that have survived the test of time, that actually have a place to put it out. You know, they have to get their own place. Well, where did to put people like us put our shit out before? The it's all online. Existed, any, it's you know? all online anyway. No, but I mean, it like, was really fucking hard. And so now, well, maybe it should would, still you were, you were be hard. It it's too fucking you, you easy. You were on the streets of New oh, York. Oh, the uh-huh. pieces. Okay. Okay. One second, Tom. That, I think that's the key. You think that I am making it too easy for these guys. I think that is the critical issue. Potentially, issue. yes. It's, so, not, it's not an accomplishment so to get what? your figure on so, the DKE table. So what? The Any so asshole that has a blister carded figure <coughs> can call you up and want and put their work on your table. If it fits, yes, but you have to understand. Back in the day, you used to have to struggle to get to be in a position but like because that. Because this is all that I'm doing now. The table is well, filled that, with carded we can, we can have a conversation of whether that's a wise move. <laughs> hey, I'm enjoying it. Right? Okay. We're sitting here talking about it. A lot of people are benefiting from it. And if I'm providing a platform for artists to express themselves, so be yeah, it. Yeah, sure. That's right? cool. But ultimately, right? But the then market, don't complain when established people don't want to show with you. But that's the complaint? No, that's not why. The, the reason why is because you don't need the promotion. When someone is selling something at the DKE booth, they're getting half the money. It's the farm leagues. Fine, right? I I am not like um, I'm not like the All Star Game by any means. No, right? You and used so, to be, weren't you? No. no. There's no All Stars in this shit anyway. I, I'm just saying, there's no, there's not a lot of reason for you to give me a toy to sell at a show because you can put it online and sell it yourself and get all the money. So most of the people that I sell product for are people who are sacrificing a cut of the money in exchange for the promotion and exposure. And I think I'm doing right by most of these people. And the people who don't sell, you know, won't be back. They know it. There's not people whose stuff isn't selling. So there's people you've told, like, second time around, no thank you? Not no thank you. I've told them I need to sell through what I have. Before you give me another thing. Yeah. Right? And so... Most things don't sell out at one show. Most things take two or three shows. Right. Um, there are a lot of, if, if something is too risky, I will just take it straight on consignment. Right? So I will like, send the figures back if they don't sell, um, just in order to, to protect myself. But um, I, I don't know. I, I, I personally don't think that the DKE booth is like you know, representing the superstars of the world. Right? Because as soon as someone gets to the point where they can sell the product on their own and make full pop on every release, they don't need me. That's not what I'm there for. And I've never purported to be that. Okay. Somebody needs to be that guy. I'll let you be that guy. That's not what I'm saying. All right. How about this one? Ha ha. Maybe you should recuse yourself from the couch for a moment? No, fuck no, man. It was I mean, party. it's unusual to, to review a figure when the person that made it is sitting on the couch. Right. But I think but we're here, here we are, and let's do it. It's the crust metal piece by Dollar Slice Bootlegs. It's one of the part of the Krusty series. <laughs> Krusty the Clown It's series. outside the trilogy. It was just a quick little outside of that universe. Um, okay, it's, 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 a bl- it's a black and white piece, which I always like. And it's a crusty figure. Except for the green. Yeah. Well, nice okay, so, and the back has got uh, a really kind of <laughs> crude drawing of crusty killing a baby and fucking skull fucking Reverend Lovejoy. <laughs> yeah, let me get that a little closer because last boss really fucking killed it. Usually I have to like tell my artist like that I work with like no that's not fucked up enough for me. This he sent me, and it was just like the this text just was just like, I love you. Yeah, it was just like we didn't have to do uh, any discussions at all. It was like, he's skull fucking Lovejoy and like finger in his mouth. I love you. <laughs> and the front, I mean, fuck, look at the burning, I mean, churches, I mean, you know, fuck Christianity and, and Catholicism, out? and like, it's just great. This motherfucker's <laughs> dope. Okay, all right. Why do you is- feel you need to take this stance? Don't get me started. We don't have enough time. Let's see. The so thing. what I love about Dollar Slice's work is the magnetic articulation. Most people don't take figures out of the package, but he spends all of this time. I know I saw it all week. <laughs> it, it, he spends so much time doing it that instead of delivering the figures to me before the show starts, he delivered them to me halfway through the show. Hey man, I had a gallery <laughs> fucking <laughs> come up out of nowhere. It was gnarly uh, deadline. Uh, fucked my yeah, life off. Uh, like it sucked, man. 
Oh, we still sold half the run. There were no all shit. pieces. That's really fun. Cool. Um, I didn't think anybody was going to grab one at all. I figured it was going to upset people. Yeah, you but mean? isn't that why people want to buy? You're intending to upset, are you not? Well, this one? I mean... I'm You're not intending to offend? No, I'm intending to stoke motherfuckers out who are listening to fucking, like, whatever the goddamn metal Dude, they like, Slayer, whatever shit is fucking, like fucking skull awesome fucking skull. Like priest. I mean, this is fucking some sicky-ass fucking corpse paint going on, man. Yeah. How fun is that? Here's like, he's like, I want to burn a fucking church. <laughs> and look at his little, like, fucking metal butt crack hanging out. Like, here, let me, let me get that Remember shadow. Remember what I said about recusing yourself? See, he's got his butt crack. I mean, that thing's fun. Okay, we're all fine with this. I'm oh, man, I'm kissing my own ass. Okay. I like my toys. Holy shit, that's fucking shocking. Here's the problem with this. <laughs> there you go. Here's the problem with this piece. All right. And it's really technical. I really don't like the way... Here's the drawing oh, okay, of your yeah, character, yeah. and the bubble is like going right down the middle of the figure. Could have this character not have just been moved over a little bit? It's the composition, and this is the only thing, I, the composition of the package is a little screwy. I just don't like when the bubble goes over like the main part of the thing. Is that like a stupid thing to be worried about? It's technical, and like in the black box, it's like way the fuck is it? It's day one. We've always you know, said it, it fucked it, off and wrong. It's great, dude. Don't you have a template? Of yeah, we could if we really fucking wanted to, but it's so much better that way. It's just <laughs> off. Sometimes shittier is better. Dude, when everything's as precise as that fucking not. shit in my castings, and everything's all fucking cuckoo, but it's you're fun not, to be you, a little I've loose, I've seen man. you work, and I've seen how much pride you've taken in what you do. You know, you put a lot of effort into it. Why go through so much trouble to make the figure excellent and then just sort of skate it's, on the pack. Oh, it's the just the way it's skate. been, man. I mean, Dude, shit. come on. Yo, all right, Neil. Yo, you hear this Remember guy? You hear this guy? We, we push some, some people push, you know, to their limits. I'm just, I, I it's, know, I hear you. It's just a tip. It's just a tip. You know, oh, so the, 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 the relationship between the bubble with the figure and the graphic on the thing and the logo on the top, they should all, they should not fight with each other. Okay, the same case in point with this as well. Now, first of all, I know a young person made this. So are you going to review this in the light of him being 13? Or are you just going to be like, <laughs> what, what, give it, just pretend that he is just... What should I do? I don't what know. Do you Dude, I'll start this one. <laughs> okay, all right. go ahead. All right, because I, I, you know, I can be a real dick. Um, <laughs> I think it's fucking, I, I don't know. Like, it's rad. Like, the kid sculpted it right. Like, it looks contemporary, it looks like an adult, like, it looks like it could have been at, like, its own booth, like, any of this kind of style stuff, you know, uh, at Decon. Like, this kid shredded, I think. I think he fucking killed it. And the, the color choice and the card, so you don't everything's... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I won't do that again. It's fucking tight. It's fucking tight. I love the colors. I, I think he did a killer job. The, the, the execution is super flawless. Like, he's just a goddamn kid, and this is what he does, like off the bat that's that's fucking crazy like hopefully he doesn't get over it like in a few years when he like starts getting girls and stuff and he sticks with it you know like because you guys will be in trouble <laughs> <laughs> no man this kid's fucking dope i i like it i, I fuck man it's you wouldn't know a kid made it if you weren't yeah, told a kid know. made I it, Mister Evil Mind. It's, it's totally fucking on point. It's good. I mean, if I and I'm only gonna give constructive criticism here again with the graphic design. I feel like the the text and and the background where the figure is is really competing with the with the background image. Like I can't really read the text because it's fighting with the thing. I would put a box around it or. Do something to you know to make certain elements of it pop off, like Mr. Evil Mind. Give it a black drop shadow so you can see it, or maybe make the part where the the background graphic is behind the lettering, make it a little transparent or darken it or something. That's the only problem with it. It just the graphic does the graphic design is 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 not 100% there because it's interesting shit, and I just feel like at least I feel. At least what I, when I do this thing, that the packaging is almost, if not more important than the piece itself. But that that is your style. Yeah, you but know, I'm just saying. You talk about how shitty the figures are, but you the graphic your graphic design is what makes your work <coughs> iconic, not the not the resin figures. I feel it should all work together, and aside should. from my own work, I'm talking it's about like you. Whatever. I'm talking about you. What differentiates your work from everyone else is you have a certain graphic style, and that is your strength. I'm just saying you want people to be able to read what you wrote on the thing. Can I, this, absolutely. I studied that earlier and you know I 
when checked it out, there's a support bubble, vacuum form bubble. I know, right? It's fucking it, amazing. He did it with a, one of those old vintage uh, Hot Wheels vacuum form kits. Really? To make God, his yeah. own yeah. support yeah. little vacuum yeah. piece it's, underneath it's, there. It's like, like, yeah, it's it fucking kid. great. That's this this like, artist rules, rules, you know? Like, and shit, he dude, only made 10 pieces, up. but yeah. we did sell out. Right. I agree with the graphic point of view. It's hard to see the letters and it's hard to see the figure. If they were blocked out, then it would be an A+. Plus. So it's a B. It's good, but it could have been better with yeah, a couple of tricks. But the, the talent and the concept is here. It just needs, it just the Photoshop needs a little little help. And the freezing wire effect? The yeah, wire frame glasses? Yeah, it's really fucking good. It's really it's fucking out of good. Control. And the fact that the figure isn't like rattling around. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, yeah, man. it's really excellent. He did this play. all by himself. Yeah. He didn't have no help from a grown up. That's crazy. <laughs> you can't, he's not very <laughs> coming. Work on the colors on the graphics so I can read the letters a little bit better. Otherwise, you got a bright future in this thing, kid. And that's coming from the suckwood himself. And I know that has some currency. To some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> How many more do we have? Uh, two. Okay. Uh, Credenda Studios. The Fouse. And this guy does good shit. I've seen his stuff. I've seen. So, so this discussion. series is where he was mashing up, um, you know, famous horror, contemporary horror <laughs> characters with bounty hunters. And the Freddy Fett was the first mm -hmm. one that sold out. He'd since done, you know, a Dengar. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, Muckus was the Michael Myers Zuckus figure, but this was the most popular one, so I asked him if he'd make another uh, Freddy version because all the people who are buying the new ones now, you know, are still pining for this one. So he made it in a uh, you know a Turkish uh, Uze colorway, and he called it. He changed the name. It's a uh, Fetty Fret. Fetty Fret. Burn face, and it's a it's a it's a mashup between Boba Fett and Freddy Krueger, and it looks like a vintage Star Wars. It looks like a vintage Uze figure. the The reason why this looks like an Uze figure is because Uze, like in the Star Wars toys, they would have here's the figure, and then here's a photo of the character from the movie. In this case, it's just a picture of the figure, mm -hmm. which is was an Uze thing. Which is in this case, because it's an Uze tribute, it works. Otherwise, I think that's the laziest fucking thing you can do when you just put a f photo of the thing next to the fucking thing. <laughs> I laughed out loud. Yeah, but, because, but this is a parody. <laughs> yeah. This is a parody of an Uze figure. I mean, it, number 666, a little easy. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, Can, I, I, can it all go yeah. easy? I don't know. I think this is firing on all cylinders. I it's think his execution and his main job of the figure is... Yeah, it's well executed. I just have to question, like, why and why do it at all? Okay. Why? Because I sold out of the first version. Oh, so selling out is what makes something good. <laughs> yes! Oh. And then I emailed him and I'm like, dude, the people who ask me for Freddy, all, Freddy Fett all the time. What's this guy? What do you have more. to say from the peanut gallery? It, it, just like the clip though is what Doug was about to start saying. Like, out of all the things people like walk up and request, it's usually horror characters. Freddy, Jason, stuff like that. Guys that like this sort of thing, or levitate to the bootleg thing, also like horror films a lot of times. All right, so the, I'll, okay, I'll, but I got another little tip here for people making resin figures. So if you have a series of figures, right, and the first figure is usually your best figure, right, and then it's kind of, you keep going down the <laughs> list and it's like kind of diminishing returns, right? Go and back so, and do the first thing again. Yes, you have to go back and find a way to, to introduce that first figure again to keep people buying the rest of it. It's just, you can see it, it happened to Playmates with like the Simpsons line, like first series had Bart, Homer, Marge, you know, uh, Krusty or whoever, and then that sold out, and then by the time they got to series 16, it's like they're doing like Devil Homer and, you know, the, the lunch lady or whoever, and really they just need to keep selling, you know, Bart, Homer, Marge, and Lisa. And they need to figure out ways I mean, to reintroduce them. I mean, that's also I think them. people have people who come into some of this stuff late. It's like, why should I buy the later editions when I can't get the earlier shit? So this is allows people to continue. So this was based on my request. Right, um, this has your your taste written all over it. No, I mean he he. I think he did a good job of redoing it in a different colorway and changing the whole theme of it. 
I'm going to say, though, and this is a real pet peeve of mine, is like when people misuse the Star Wars font. Oh, you know, No, because, listen, when you have Star Wars font in your computer, mm -hmm. it, it, there's no capitals in lowercase. It's all capitals, and the difference between when you put the cat blocks on or not I is that, that they have the serif that connects the letters together. I think you should like and the letters do like a YouTube video about how to properly This is a YouTube this video. No, it's mean, <laughs> only like oh, you know shit. like an hour like you know dissertation about the Star Wars font and its proper usage. I think I don't look like, because this E is connect is not uh, listen First of all, look at the E and this E and this T. This is not the place to do it. You need you know like why, you know, you know why it is the place to do yeah. it? Because it's my fucking show. Yeah. And I, I always say this. If you're going to use the Star Wars font, the, the letters connect in logical ways. <laughs> and there's other times when they're not supposed to connect. Why is this E next to the T and the bottom of the E is connecting to the bottom of the T, making it look like a backwards J, where the natural place... <laughs> Voice, he keeps raising his voice, get angry. The natural place where the E and the T would connect is a space. <laughs> I'll tell you that if, if you think about it, if you, if, you think, like, if you did a video just about the usage of like the Star Wars font, and like were that angry for a whole time, like I would watch that like over and over again. That'd be sure fucking incredible. Yes, fine. Right, oh my God. God. That's the next piece. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had uh, all, at the last minute we got five glow in the dark versions of the space oddity. We've sold them all, so we can't show it to you. Uh, this is the another version that's coming out in January from the Galactic Jerk Bags uh, and uh, DLL Customs. Um, go from there. Oh, now I can talk. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, Space Odyssey, the Starman, and it's a David Bowie figure in his Ziggy Stardust uh, gear, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is this yeah, a Close Encounters thing on the back? And that's our show. No, 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 no. Uh, no, I just want to think about it. I mean, yeah, obviously this is this is great. This is well done. It It's uh, a really great David Bowie tribute figure. The figure is well made. It, it looks a little... Handmade. This is the prototype. I don't. It looks good. I mean, the you know it, it, the, the the paint job. It looks a little handmade, which is cool. I like the way the guitar has a little painterly vibe to it. It's got some dents in it, but it's a it's a nice it's a nicely executed thing. And I like that this is a, like an original artist's rendering of who did the who did the the artwork. Uh, Medicine M D C M. I don't know who the fuck that. Oh, what? Mike M D C M. Oh, okay. It, it looks good. It you know you could have just took a picture of David Bowie, but you made an original piece. Is it going to be on that pearlescent paper? Like no, the, just the glow in the dark one. Oh. That was amazing. The the one thing about the glow in the dark one, it was on this pearlescent paper that was glittery and not that like shiny things make. And know, there was a prince figure wearing the shirt, the sexy <laughs> motherfucker shirt. I I like it. I mean, you know what. what it's easy in a way just because everyone fucking loves David Bowie this is the thing about stuff like this people I w this was right next to the booth at the convention and a lot of people came I was like I gotta have this I want this it was like the only yeah, thing yeah we had 50 of these yeah but it was the only thing these. that they saw but it's cool but the thing is the reason why they want it is because they love David Bowie mm -hmm. and you know what and all the other aspects of it don't matter but that's okay sometimes okay yeah it is okay yeah that's what's right I mean but how many based three, on three cars, like David no. Bowie's you have like, it's fucking no there's tight. zero David Bowie, Bowie like, toys and it needs to yeah. exist yeah. and somebody had to do it and that's the heroic of them so, and it sells better and gets it, more attention than the, some the, fucking the, the lunatic the on the hill. Yourself, like, you know, the jerk bag, put I, together the uh, figure, kit it, and, and Galactic Jerk Bag yeah. is a legitimate organization. Yeah, and the guitar, <laughs> like, yeah. the guitar, the guitar and the, sculpted. The, yeah, and the, uh, yeah, it's excellent. Who sculpted the head? You? Uh, Hammethats did the Oh, okay. oh, oh so these are all Tyler, important, all right. these are all important people that have been doing shit, came together to make this piece. Oh, wow, look at that. All of this is on the back. Holy sheep shit, look at that. All the credits? <laughs> I wish I knew how to read. Here you go. <laughs> a lot of people went into this. Lemmy? Yeah, there's going to be a Lemmy figure, which is important. Yes, these things should exist. Not yeah. everybody should go out there and just put their id on, on a blister card. Hmm. Right? <laughs>
Okay. I like it. It's good. I mean, the, it's, it's there's a pl- there's a place for this stuff, and it's it's well done. And I and I, I can't really find anything negative to say about Did, this. Didn't you make a Beastie Boys figure? Me? No, him. Sorry, Me? you. I did make an Adam Young. <laughs> yeah, and so... I, yeah, you. Who me? Um, never mind. But I, I, mashed, I, mashed, I mashed it up with the, with the spirit of Obi-Wan figures. Uh, that makes it okay. You mash it up with Star Wars. <laughs> well, these are Star Wars figures, ultimately. Oh, right, okay. Aren't they? I'm just, I'm just checking. Yeah, no, it's good. I wanted to be clear. Yeah, no, it's good. You know, but I'm just saying there's not a lot of interpretation going on here. But that might not be necessary. And the thing is... But I like that it doesn't say David Bowie, you know. It's like it's a... You you don't want to get sued. No, but that's not... But but it's like David Bowie went through a lot of phases, so you could make different versions of David Bowie. like how it sort of focuses on something that's a little inside. Is that for some people, sometimes the obvious... The, the reference to David Bowie is all that needs to but sell it, what I right. like about this is if and you're going to do that this is nicely sideways great and then sometimes there's other artists such as yourself who try and take a higher road it's and not that, a higher road in a way it is it's more difficult oh isn't it <laughs> I guess it, but some of my shit is low road as fuck absolutely <laughs> Did I agree to? Oh no, no, it's not. <laughs> no, no, it's just a good piece. I'm this just saying. No, I'm like, saying if you're gonna do shit like this, this is how you do it. Okay. That's what I'm saying. There's there's so easy gonna, obvious ways to like make tribute things, mm-hmm. and then there's ways to, you know, position them where they're not beating you over the head with it. You know, and this is this succeeds at not beating you over the head. All I can say is that if I had 50 of them, I would have sold 50 of them. Yeah, because, because people like fucking David Bowie. That's right. But how bad that this is well done. Do you think... That's the thing I always wonder. It's like, people look at this and they say, I love David Bowie. They don't want this because they love galactic jerkbags. Is that figure like walking down Artist Alley, though, at Comic-Con and seeing fan art? Is that just a fan art figure, or does that mean anything? Like, does that... Or is that just... Log, log? I don't know. I disagree because it's not because all those guys just making fan art are just ripping a picture off of the internet, putting on a paper, and then selling a print. There's a whole team of people that went into work on that. They did original art. They did sculpt. Look, there's nothing They're not wrong, just ripping off an image from either. DeviantArt and selling it as their own. Fan That's art. Has, art. Fan art has its place too, but obviously, you know, no one here likes it because they call it fan art. Right, I mean that, that's a pejorative well, term. I mean, I guess the the, the, the presumption is, and maybe it's some not people, real art. Some it's fan art. Well, some pe- yeah, maybe. It's unlicensed oh, well, art. Look, this is all unlicensed. <laughs> right, so there's no distinction. Unlicensed fan art. Unlicensed. Art. You mean fart? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's fart. I mean, I guess there's people who would say like. Should this stuff be making oh, commentary, gosh. or is it okay for it to just exist as a as a tribute thing? It's all okay to exist. Some people are going to make that commentary in their work. Yeah, the thing is, who needs it. a commentary on David Bowie? You know, right? Maybe just making it is the commentary itself. That's true. <laughs> to me, it's more sort of a commemorance of it. You know, a memorial kind of deal. Yeah, you want to pay homage to that person and the respect that you have for them. Maybe so maybe the earth is going to get swallowed up by the sun and what, we're all going to die. I mean, it's fine. I do appreciate that because not everything has to be filled with wry, ironic commentary. And like you said, just the fact that it exists, it's like, this should exist because David Bowie is an important icon and making something into a Star Wars figure is the ultimate way of memorializing something and institutionalizing something. And the regular toy... Uh, world is not go- is too stupid. Hasbro is too stupid yeah. and, to make something like this. So somebody else has to do it. It has to exist. You know, there is. It some- should exist, but it doesn't. So somebody has has to do it. There is also something to be said for the person who is the first person to do it. And sometimes the first person to do it gets credit for being the first person. And sometimes it's not the best. And sometimes the best work comes out years later. But the first person still gets the credit because they were the first to do it. Sometimes the first person doesn't get any credit at all and they go through the rest of the life being pissed off. You ever seen graffiti? (laughs) (laughs) But you're not that person. No. Yes. When you kick the bucket, how do you want to be immortalized on a card? What's going to be the title of it? I mean, 
How would you like to be uh, immortalized as Mr. Bowie was on that card? That's a good fucking question. Uh, I first of all I expect it, to look, outlive all of you. Let, no, but let's just say <laughs> let's just say you, you tragically die, you know, next week. Right. You know, what I mean, something happens. You know, there's gonna be like fucking thirty of us out there trying to make the fucking cards. I mean, how would you speaking now that you're alive? I would, would, you like see, to see I would love you to see 30 on different card. versions. If there were Beautiful. 30 different versions, it Beautiful. doesn't matter what they are specifically. He would like his dick to be a little bigger. No, okay. I'm fine with this. That's, that's, that's the title of it. Just to, to be honest that's with you. That's the title of his autobiography. If, if I like, died, I wish my dick was bigger. Real, real talk, if I died tomorrow and 30 people wanted to eulogize me in a piece of artwork, it doesn't matter what it is. Just the fact that that's even a, true is enough for me. You can make a fucking Trump suck, you know, predator. Ah. And, uh, Trump suck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'd be happy with that. You know that's going to be out at Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trump yeah, suck exactly. predator. Are we on the or line? tomorrow night. Yes. <laughs> Good. You, get, get, get busy. Uh, no. So, Derek Loglog had a little mini art show at our booth, and this is one of the pieces. It was these three pieces all together. And you wanted me to bring a sample yes, of his I, work yes, that did. you could talk about? Okay, now he's in the room, and now, please keep your dick in your pants, but <laughs> I am going to say I've seen these things before, and I think, real talk, stay over there. Um, <laughs> this is, these, these pieces are some of the greatest achievements in the resin bootleg game ever. Just the sheer size the magnitude the, and the execution of these things is on a craft level, I think, beyond what anyone else has ever done. Thanks. It... <laughs> <laughs> uh, just the fact... I mean, I don't see a single fucking... The fact it's huge, I don't see a bubble, I don't see any flaws, I, it, it tactically feels great, the, the iridescent... I know what goes into doing stuff with dusting molds and the execution of this is great, and the fact that, like... You don't really know exactly what the fuck it's about. What I love is you that is a base with the little, with the yeah, little rubber feet. So I love the cannibalization of the parts of things that are known and taking it and putting it into art and making it something completely unknown. So like you look at something and you see a Star Wars piece in there, but this it's is not, not a about Star, Star Wars. Wars. Piece. It's been like turned into you know into something completely different but still kind of references, and it's like this montage. But this almost feels like a religious item, too, you know? This feels like mm -hmm. something all I the, would buy in Little Italy. All, totally. the, all the work has that feel. It's all so fucking crazy, think, all the colors, the way all, they I mean, all this, like All of his work has yeah, a, a religious feel to it. Yeah, all yeah, it does. And so what, what was this base? Uh, a McFarlane playset is the underwater diver. Uh, see yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, and then this little Native American guy? The cupboard. Uh, I mean, but I, I, I mean, I, like, this, but I mean, this so thing, you could make a laundry list of like all the pieces and where they came from, yeah. and you'd be like, holy shit, that came from I that. Mean, I and think then that's what makes it's in. You don't, you can't tell. That's what makes a lot of these bootleg things successful is that like you've taken a piece, and you're not depending on where the piece came from and for to make it a success. Mm -hmm. It's like it's just a useful form to convey. What what I what I'm trying to say, you know, like this, he uses things with the Amidala body and things like that, but it's not like, oh, that's Queen Amidala. He's almost taking like what makes Queen Amidala archetypical and just sort of using that, yeah, without it having to have to be Queen Amidala. Like you don't have to have seen Episode One to get that this has a depth to it, you know, and is 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 pulling on subconscious things. You know, that, that's you, even Star Wars, it's like Star Wars does the same thing. Star Wars borrows from everything. Do you sculpt it all? Uh, if I need to add things on, like that one, the whole thing came from the Millennium Falcon window where the gun shoots through. So I had to fill all that in with wax. Okay, there, but for the like, most part, I mean, yeah, you're, you're pulling, crazy. you're cannibalizing pieces from... Collaging. From collage. Is this kind of like a 3D collage in a way and turning it into like... Religious iconography and, and this so all large. comes out of one mold. You're yeah. fucking crazy, How the man. Fuck? This is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that two pieces? Uh, this is this is some unsung shit. Pieces. This is a, this is an this incredible, incredible achievement. Fucking crazy. And the thing is, the There's guy that makes this is the most boring, yeah. weird, awkward dude you'd ever like. 
he doesn't come across like a great, brilliant artist. He seems sort of just like a kind of schlubby. He's not even listening to you. Yeah, so but it's like, like, yeah, but it's like that's what's so cool shit. about it. It's like oh you'd think a really pretentious douchebag made this, and it's actually a really humble, chill guy made this. So, uh, so you know, it's, so it's, so it's, actually it wins on every way. Liking the artist makes you like the work more. No. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it's so true about art. I don't care what you say. It's like, if you like the person, you like their art better. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you have a piece of art on your wall, and then one day you meet that artist, and, and they're a complete dick, you take dick it down. to you, you just, it, it oh, taints it. No. It yeah. happens a lot. It's yeah, really hard true. to stay objective if you hate the artist. And a lot of, there's just a lot of good artists out there. Uh, it, it's even true in music. It's like, if you like... Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. If you perceive that like the lead singer of the band could be your friend or could be someone you could hang with, you're more likely to like them. And if you think they're a dick, like you just kind of lose it. Don't meet your heroes. No, don't. That's what that's what Last Jedi is all about. Stop ruining it for everybody. <laughs> How does that ruin it? Huh. Just giving you a hard time. Cause yeah, this fun. is good shit. What do you think? I fucking love it. I mean, yeah. I was just, it's doing the, the brushing people on the pigments people on the molds. People don't like get this fucking, stuff. Like, this crazy stuff is thing. too like, challenging It's for an artist. You're ahead artist. of your time, my friend. Yeah, dude. People need to be more aware of You're what gonna the fuck goes into this. Like, That's not specific. Before they can appreciate like, <laughs> the, the brushing on the pigments and just your precision of it. It's koalas, dude. And like... Just the base, oh, like losing the pure, his mind. iridescence, like. Run, 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 run! <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. Uh, that's well, I'm gonna say rubbish. something real quick. What's funny is what you said earlier it's successful. You're talking in artistic terms. It's successful. It depends on how you define success. You know, because I didn't sell any of that. I sold that one right there to another guy in the resin scene, and that's where I sell most of my stuff is to other artists because yeah. they get it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, all the greats historically in our history have died, like you just said, broke, hungry, and all that, you know? So to know that's where I'm at, and that's why nobody's buying it, intrigues me. You know, it says, I know that I'm going in the right direction, we'll, I know I should keep it. We'll appreciate you after you're dead. Well, kill yourself I mean, now. No, I mean, yeah. so, uh, obviously <laughs> Next you time you're a bad day, kill yourself. There's different, there's, different, there's, there's different types of success. I mean, obviously that's everybody true. wants to get the fame and the financial renominations and all the you know sort of like in, incidental benefits that go along with being somebody that that is recognized in their time i just mean successful in its achievement as an art object unto itself you know it's like when you try to create something it either it either is the thing you attempted to make or it's not and this seems to be doing what it's supposed to do well give it time word will get around and the quality will speak for itself that's not necessarily true. Well, not necessarily untrue. I mean, I don't know. I don't. This belongs in an art gallery. This is, should be in an art gallery. That's true. true. We do that's the, that's true. where we need to take all this shit next. All right, do that, everybody. Thanks for watching. Fucking suck talk. My name is the Super Suck Lord. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I had a great time. Um, I'd like to thank. Sorry, one last thing. Doug K. Second. Um, if uh, you see anything here that you like, you can email me at dktoys at gmail dot com. That's it. And if you want us to review the toys, you can see the uh, the information at the end of the episode. Dollar slice. Closing remarks. Dude, I was so fucking stoned when we started. I was terrified. And like, now it's over. Where are you at I'm now? So psyched. I'm ready to get way more stoned again. Cause I'm <laughs> so yeah. Having like, yeah. yeah, you guys just argue. Thanks for the studio audience. Woo! Yay! Yeah. 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 Thanks for letting me just have you. No, the fuck is. I know, your toy reviewed? Send to Suckadel, Post Office Box 130134, Chinatown, New York, 10013. Handmade resin or injection molded bootlegs only. No vinyl, no customs. Submissions cannot be returned. Submission does not guarantee inclusion. Include your contact information and social media handles. Thank you.